Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss trimethoprim as an individual antibiotic and the combination form of it. Let's begin with the trimethoprim itself. It is an enzyme inhibitor of dihydrofolate reductase, or DHFR in short, and block the biosynthesis of tetrahydrofolate in bacteria cells. Take a look at this graph here where the action of trimethoprim is indicated against dihydrofolate reductase, the enzyme that carries out the conversion of dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid or tetrahydrofolate. And as we saw in previous video on sulfonamides, tetrahydrofolate is an essential precursor in the biromidine and DNA synthesis pathway. Since trimethoprim inhibit tetrahydrofolate production, the DNA synthesis will be blocked as well. So it is considered as a nucleic acid synthesis inhibitor. In other resources, it is looked at as anti-metabolite because tetrahydrofolate is not only important for DNA synthesis, but also used in various metabolic reactions in the bacteria cells. Regardless of the naming, the outcome is the same, which is the inhibition of cellular growth and development in bacteria. Hence, trimethoprim is considered a bacteriostatic antibiotic in a state of bactericidal. The chemical structure of trimethoprim is shown here. It has a unique diamino biromidine structure. Now that we have got trimethoprim covered, let's have a discussion on the combination formulation in which a trimethoprim is part of. This combination is known as cotrimoxazole, which is a conjugation of trimethoprim with sulfamethoxazole. So far, we must have known that sulfonamides target dihydropteroate synthetase while trimethoprim acts against dihydrofolate reductase. Therefore, two enzymes in one biosynthetic route are inhibited. This approach is called the sequential blocking. You might ask yourself, why do we need to have a combination of these two drugs in the first place? The answer to this question comes from the fact that trimethoprim and sulfonamides are both bacteriostatic when used alone. But a bactericidal effect can be achieved when these two drugs are combined due to their synergistic action. This strategy was found to be very effective in inhibiting a biosynthetic route and destroying the bacteria in addition to the advantage of keeping the doses of both the drugs at safe level. This level is attained by the ratio of 1 to 5, where 1 is for trimethoprim and 5 is for sulfamethoxazole. Moving to the last part of this video, dihydrofolate reductase is present in mammalian cells like a human and bacteria as well. Then, why trimethoprim is not toxic to our own cells? This, in fact, is due to mutations that developed over a million years and resulted in significant difference in the structure between the two enzymes. Most of enzymes are basically proteins. So these mutations alter either the sequence of amino acid or the folding of peptide chain that make up the enzyme. This mutation led to trimethoprim being able to recognize and bind to the bacteria enzyme more strongly than those in the human. Hence, trimethoprim is considered to be safe for us as it doesn't exert its inhibitory action on our own cells. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.